My first type theory. A children's book about logics. A loving banter to a loving brother who despite of all my chanter refused to learn type theory. A story of how we prove that what we think is right using something we know like programs that we write. In the beginning there was only logic. Premise A was lonely in search of a friend, so implication came along and landed a hand. If A holds and A implies B we can tell then not only A holds but B as well. Such facts needn't be letters or such, sentences they were, words and facts. However, if we were to write them so much, cramped it became and all of them touch. So with A's and B's we'd continue to stick, for all could keep distance and none would get sick. So little A got sad, to be or not to be, the question it had. What is the proof of my existence? A thought, wherefore it was for sure. A little A next to two dots, the cure. It appeared out of the distance. I am you, it said in a squeaky voice. There might be more, I might be more, but I am yours. With tears in its eyes, A hugged it tight. But what was that? A looked to the right. A implies B was there and it too had these dots and next to it a tiny F standing in this shining spot. F and A became best friends indeed, but every time they stood next to each other a proof of B appeared. Say proof of B, what are you? they asked, but it couldn't tell. Who I am depends on F and A, the proof of B would yell. Turned out F had sheer magical powers. It was a transformation rule that once it devours any kind of proof of A, gets one specific B on its way. In the kingdom of programs they call it a function, taking inputs, producing outputs, but really we know that inputs are just proofs of the premises, the proof of posterior, the output it crows. Also, and this is just easy to see, tis why we call types propositions and type theory. The way we write functions, so easy it goes, the function and its arguments equals the output it poses. Is an input a function, as such we can use it. In front of its arguments, reduction will prove it. Just make sure that the types do still fit. Wrong things in wrong holes means you're not proving it. Try this yourself on these simplistic tasks. In no time at all you'll have mastered the art. Eagerly we want to write more on our own. But one piece is still missing, for now we just frown. For yet we cannot express any if then else. In fact little we know about proofs themselves. For that we use a data declaration. It tells us the way for a type to be made and contains a set of functions called constructors that make up the ways that a proof can be looked at. Here is an A and if it's created, it's one of the three that say they can make it. I'm an A and I'm an A too and some of them need premises so they can make an A too. If a proof for all A wants to stand, it needs to go through all constructors at hand. Take this list type for example. One proof of a list is an empty preamble, another is a thing and a list on a tether, so the thing can be added to a new list together. Now if we want to prove something for all lists there are, 
Proving it for all constructors gets us however far. Let's prove that all lists do have a length indeed. A function from lists to a number we need. But by just looking at a variable for a list we can't tell, which number the length should now be all that well. So we split up the lists prove there can be. The list can be empty or append with some pre. In the empty case, sure, the answer is zero, otherwise one more than the rest gets the barrel. Other ways to prove this there sure are, but look at what happens if we use this for more. Let us assume we had to find what we need, we could prove an empty list's length to be zero indeed. For this we can use the proof we just made and apply it so we get a type we create. The arguments for this sure come from somewhere, we take them from proofs that the arguments bear. Let's have a look at what happens in the proof. A proof without splits is just boring and spoof. But if we split the list in the types we can see, for this line they changed depending on what are we. In the empty list case, the L changes with it. For now we do know it ain't some random spirit. So empty is empty and length of empty is fine. Sure as hell somehow this proof can be rhymed. Things become tricky in the appending case. Append ain't no empty the thing that we face. However the good thing it cannot ever be that we get a proof of their equality. Therefore this line can never be, goodbye we can say now and then let it flee. Succeeded we have and celebrating are we, but one thing is left that really there should be. One of the premises was an equality, but what could a proof of an equality be? I try to spare you the details of this shenanigans for now. Headaches equality causes, distraction it sows. Two things are equal if that term computes to be equal. The proof of this raffle is called in this sequel. Raffle is a thing that can only be created if the terms in its type can be properly mated. In the proof we just did you see that it's there. Cause empty is empty, no matter to spare. In the append case, it is quite easy to see, empty ain't append, so a raffle cannot be. If a proof about something cannot possibly plea, absurd we do call it and let the line flee. One last thing before we wrap it all up. Important it is that all functions stop. You saw it before in the proof of the length. We used it in itself to give it more strength. But if you write a function and it doesn't stop, we can cheat with recursion, a thing we want not. The next part is all left to your imagination. How would proofs that you know be described in this fashion? How would your favorite data type be how would you prove it behaves to agree? So a function is a proof that for all that goes in, a right output exists however built in. The proof of a function is its implementation, stating exactly the works of its transformation. The inputs are proofs of the premises, the outputs proof of posterior, with programming we can prove in a way that's familiar. Now you just define the constructors you need, such that no bad things can be constructed indeed. And if it has never been programming you're after, just name all your types after statements. We gotcha. And how many errors in programs we got, a type checker finds them for us quite a lot. And I do not care if Einstein said it or what, we might be stupid. But our machines sure are not. Merry Christmas to all the parents out there. 
and to all those who teach their kids and kin about logics. Please see the comments for material if you want to learn more about type theory yourself. This was Arvid's My First Type Theory. Thank you for watching and let's think on everyone.